If there's one thing I've learned from my years of restaurant experience, it's this. Fresh, local ingredients are extremely important if you want to eat healthy, delicious food. I'm Sebastian Zeip, chef and farmer at the Farmer's Hens. Welcome to the Farm Fresh Table, Farm to Table Cooking in Buncombe County. In today's episode, we are going to visit Sunil Patel at Patchwork Urban Farms in one of their Montford Gardens. We're going to talk with him about his mission and to learn a little bit more about urban agriculture. We will decide what to make once we see what he's growing in his gardens. Tell us about Patchwork Urban Farms. We're super curious. We think this is a phenomenal, fantastic idea. Uh, so give us your, your elevator speech about what you do here. Well, the farm started about four years ago. We're in our fourth year and we, I started as um, just finding a few pieces of land in the city um, to grow some food. Didn't really know exactly what I was going to do, but I started a CSA that season. Mm -hmm. um, and it just kind of snowballed from there. You know, the potential for sustaining ourselves where we live mm -hmm. is like the kind of core question. Right. Um, and of course it is a regional question when it comes down to, you know, feeding a city. But at the same time, you can kind of zoom out on our food system as a whole and, and say, okay, so in the city, you know, we really should be growing like all the fresh food we eat, the stuff that requires the most attention. Um, and I really do think that that's a really like realizable goal mm -hmm. with like a regional food system that's feeding us like our bulk calories and that kind of thing. Right. Um, but small animal products, vegetables, small berries and fruits, all these different things, we likely can fit into where we live if we manage the land in that way. Right. Um, and so, so that kind of vision of growing all of that stuff right here where we live is kind of the reason for creating, like the foundation for creating a sustainable food system. But at the same time, it's also about experience, you know, experience of us as a city, like mm -hmm. being able to walk down the street and see a working farm happen on a day-to-day -day and year-to-year -year level, I think is like key in the kind of requirement for like a shift in how we relate to the land we live on, plus how we relate to our food system as right. a whole. Um, and so just by putting farms in the city, um, subtly I think we're shifting our consciousness in right. a way. And with people being able to, like you said, being able to see gardens growing around, mm -hmm. they kind of get, get a better understanding of where food is and potential for it in town. How does your average person um, get access to the food that you grow? Do you help, do you, I'm assuming you have a CSA and do you sell at farm stands or do you do direct sales? What, how do, uh, does your average person end up with food from your farms here? Uh, the most, most of our stuff goes out in our CSA program and um, we have an online store as well. Okay. Uh, and people order in the store and then they pick up at our pickup locations. Okay. We have three pickup locations all around town. One's here in Montford, right across the street. Okay. And then uh, one's in West Asheville, and one's down on the south side. Okay. Uh, but we'll likely the long-term vision is like there will be more and more pickup locations in neighborhoods because we're we're like one of our like catchphrases is like we're growing food in neighborhoods for neighborhoods. Right. You know, our our goal is to actually like feed the people who live here in the city. Uh, but we also sell to restaurants a little bit okay. as well uh, because that. Business-wise, you kind of have to grow some high-value things to make the whole farm work. Right. But that's definitely not our bu the bulk of our kind of vision behind who gets our food. Gotcha. And so uh, we have those, and then we do um, a couple markets. We have a city market on Saturdays okay. um, in downtown, uh, and then we have a pop-up farm stand at uh, Asheville Community Yoga. Okay. And then uh, we'll likely um, really concentrate on having uh, a way for people to order things from us and pick up at our pickup locations in different ways right. more and more. Um, and pop-up stands might be popping up in the future too. Very cool. Yeah.
Well, wasn't that amazing? Patchwork Urban Farms, huh? Sunil gave us some really, really nice vegetables. We got this beautiful eggplant, a couple of peppers here. I picked up a zucchini uh, to go along with because we're gonna use these vegetables right here and a couple onions and some garlic to make uh, my twist on a classic ratatouille, so a really nice hearty vegetable forward dish with some tomato sauce in there as well. And then he gave us this beautiful butternut squash and we're gonna turn this into a really nice, warming, soothing butternut squash soup. Uh, we'll put a little ginger, a little garlic, a little onion in there, and a little bit of coconut milk to give it a little bit of creaminess without adding any actual dairy to it. So we're gonna get started on our ratatouille. Uh, first thing we need to do for that is get some onions. And everything is gonna get cooked in our pan here together. There's a number of ways you can make ratatouille. Uh, we're gonna do it this version in a pan. So we're gonna take two onions, cut them in half. And ratatouille is a nice rustic, classic French dish based on uh, eggplant, peppers, zucchini, onions, and garlic with a little bit of tomato. Some people make it with whole tomatoes or diced tomatoes. We're gonna be making ours with tomato sauce in there instead. And for our garlic, all we're really gonna do is we're gonna crush and peel them and leave them in really nice big chunks. So we're gonna add a good glug of olive oil to our pot. We want to brown everything pretty nicely, especially these onions and the garlic. So we're going to add our rough cut onions. They're just whole crushed cloves of garlic, oops, to our pan. And we're just going to let these uh, saute for a bit until they take on a nice bit of uh, golden brown color. While that's cooking, we're going to prep our vegetables. So these vegetables, you can cut them in any way you really want to. Big, coarse chunks is the way we're gonna go. And we're gonna cut it in half, lengthwise. And then I'm gonna kinda cut them into these big triangle chunks. For our eggplant, you can peel these if you want to. We're just, we're not gonna do it this time. And we're gonna cut these into rounds like this. So you get a little bit of a different shape for each of the different vegetables. And for our peppers, take the top and bottom off. And just give this a little stir here. And then we're gonna cut these in half so that we can remove the seeds and a little bit of that pith. So the Sunil gave us these Corno di Toro uh, peppers. They're a, a sweet pepper. Uh, they're, if you can't find these at your local market or anything or from Sunil directly, uh, you can just use regular bell peppers for, for this dish. And these we're gonna do in kind of bigger, uh, a bigger dice. We cut these hat and cut them into quarters basically. And then we'll cut these chunks like that. We're getting a really nice color on our onions here. You want a nice little caramelization on there. So at this stage, we're gonna start adding our other vegetables. So I'm gonna add our zucchini and peppers first. Let those cook down for a little bit, and then we'll be adding our eggplants after that. Also gonna be seasoning up our uh, ratatouille right now with just uh, a good pinch of salt. A couple turns of our pepper mill. And then this is an optional step. I like it just because it adds a little bit of warmth to it. Just a small pinch of chili flake to there. So our peppers are starting to soften up just a little bit. In this stage, I'm gonna add our, our eggplants. We're adding the eggplant last because we don't want the eggplant to get too soft. It'll get a little bit mushy. Uh, so we're gonna just add it right now and toss it in there. And we're just gonna let it cook together. We're not gonna get any color on there. We're just gonna mix it in right before we add our tomato sauce. 
And this is where you can be a little bit, you can go two directions with your ratatouille. You can either take fresh tomatoes, and you can dice them, and you can add them to this and use that as your tomato base. In our case, because we don't have any more tomatoes coming out of our garden, we're gonna use some of our homemade tomato sauce instead. So this is a relatively, yeah, I wouldn't say a very thick tomato sauce. Uh, so we're gonna use probably about half of this jar. We don't need to use too much, so we're gonna use about half that jar. Yeah, a little bit over half. We're gonna give it a little stir, make sure everything is blended together real nice. We'll turn the heat down to low, and we put a lid on this, and we'll let this simmer away for about 15 minutes. For this ratatouille, we're gonna finish it with parsley. Basil is definitely not in the garden anymore, but our parsley is looking very happy and healthy. So we're gonna do some chopped fresh Italian parsley uh, to finish our ratatouille with. We're also gonna be putting just a little bit of red wine vinegar in the end, just to add a little bit of brightness. So all I did was just pick the leaves off our Italian parsley. We're gonna save that for our chickens. And we're just gonna give this uh, a rough chop. Uh, the parsley will add a nice, brightness, a little bit of green to it, the color will be really pretty, uh, and I love parsley as a finishing herb for just about everything. So our ratatouille has been simmering away for about 15 minutes, that's really all it takes. Uh, it goes really quickly. Uh, we don't want to cook it much longer than that because your vegetables are going to start getting really, really soft. You want just to, there to be a little bit of a bite to everything, uh, especially the zucchini and the peppers, it's nice if those have just a little bit of chew still to them. Uh, this dish can be served just like this hot as a side dish. You can let it cool and eat it cold, uh, or you can eat it at room temperature. It's a very versatile thing, and it can be dished on its own with a big chunk of crusty bread. You can use it as a side for fish, meat, whatever you can imagine. Uh, it's a very, very delicious thing. But last thing, the only thing we're gonna add to it at this stage is we're just gonna add a little bit of red wine vinegar to it. This adds a little bit of brightness, a little bit of acidity to it, uh, and it really will bring out all those really delicious flavors of all those vegetables. So we're just gonna do a little, it's about a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half of red wine vinegar. You can use other vinegars if you like, but classically it's red wine vinegar. And we're just gonna give that a little stir, stir that in. And then we're gonna take all our beautiful veggies here, that tomato sauce. And to finish, we're gonna sprinkle a little fresh chopped parsley on top. Give it a nice bit of color, but also a nice little bright, fresh green flavor. And if you want, you could, and I always like to finish this with some, a few turns of fresh cracked black pepper on top. And there we have 100% local ratatouille. I love butternut squash. I think it's super delicious, it's extremely versatile. And one of my favorite things to do with it is to make a really simple soup. So we're gonna make a puree of butternut squash soup. Uh, we're gonna flavor it with some onions, some garlic, and a little ginger, and then we're gonna cook it in some coconut milk. First thing we need to do is we're gonna slice up some onions, garlic, and ginger. Uh, I like to slice these really nice and thin so they cook down really quickly, and then you can add, we'll add our butternut squash to it after. And we're doing one onion, medium sized onion, about an inch and a half, two inch piece of ginger, and we've got four cloves of garlic here. This is gonna be a pureed soup, so you don't have to be super perfect with your knife work. We've got our onions, garlic, ginger chopped up. We've got our pot heating up, and we give it a good glug of olive oil. We're gonna add our onions, ginger, garlic to the pan. We just wanna sweat this, meaning we just wanna get this, the moisture out of there. We're not gonna add any color to this. And to help that along, we're gonna add a good pinch of salt here, the very beginning. This will help soften up those vegetables. They'll cook really nice and gently without getting any color on there. And we're gonna do this with the lid on to trap as much of that moisture in there. 
So we'll need to stir it every once in a while and just keep a good eye on it so you don't burn anything. And we've got it set to about medium heat. This is a very big butternut squash, so I'm probably gonna be able to make two different dishes with this if we wanted to. So I'm gonna use the, this main chunk here, the easy part, <laughs> uh, for our soup, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna save the bulb part and we'll probably roast that up and we make a really simple roasted butternut squash salad with it. Uh, all I would do with that is cut it, core it, take the seeds out, toss in salt and pepper olive oil, roast in the oven at 350 till it's soft, let it cool, and then you can toss it with your favorite vinaigrette, put a little feta cheese on there, some fresh herbs, a little arugula is really nice, and then you have a nice, easy butternut squash salad. So for, uh, to prep this, I'm taking off this big top chunk, and right here, we're gonna cut it right where it starts to bulb out. Just be careful, because it's a big vegetable to cut. I'm gonna use my handy dandy speed peeler here. Once you have your squash peeled, I'm gonna cut it in half in this direction. And then I'm gonna cut these two pieces into pretty thin slices. This way it'll help cook the squash quickly. Our onions, garlic, and ginger base has sweat down for about 15 minutes or so now. Uh, it's basically exactly where we want it to be. So this is the point where we're gonna add our sliced butternut squash. We're gonna be adding a few other seasonings to this, uh, just a few flavors that really work well with butternut squash. Uh, I'm gonna add a little pinch of chili, just a little bit of warming. This is, the, the weather's getting cold, so something a little bit more like hearty, warming, soothing is, is good. So just a little, little pinch of chili flake in there is really good. And then we're gonna also add uh, a little fresh grated Nutmeg, you can use pre-ground nutmeg if that's what you have. Uh, a little bit goes a long way with nutmeg, so we'll just do a quarter teaspoon or so of that in there, and that adds a nice, um, nice earthy flavor to it, that adds a nice depth to the, to the soup. We're gonna be using coconut milk for our, as our creamy base to this. We'll be using a little bit of water as well. So I'm using one can of Coconut milk, uh, I would suggest using just coconut milk. Don't get the light coconut milk stuff. Um, this has just got a nice amount of that nice coconut fat to it and cream. So we're just gonna add one can and then enough water to just barely cover all our sliced squash. So that was about half a can of water that went in there. Make sure everything is submerged, give it a little stir. and then we'll turn the heat down to medium low, put the lid back on, and let it simmer to those butternut squash slices are super, super tender. Uh, this will take 20 minutes for sure. Um, and then once it's cooked, we'll puree it up in our blender. Um, we can also use an immersion blender if that's what you have. Our soup's been cooking for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, all we're looking for is for that squash to be super soft. It'll start falling apart, as you can see, and you should be able to just kind of crush it really easily with the back of your spoon. So this is really nice. You could either blend it up in a blender like this, or you can use an immersion blender, and then you could just blend it directly in the pot. You'll end up with a little bit more of a textured soup if you use an immersion blender. It doesn't make it quite as smooth as this would make it, but that's total up to you. And we're gonna blend this soup so it's really nice and smooth. And then we'll just pour our soup back into our pot, keep it warm. And there we have a beautiful, simple puree of butternut squash soup with some onions, garlic, ginger, a little bit of coconut milk in there. Thanks so much for joining us. We've made this beautiful ratatouille and a butternut squash soup. Please enjoy.